Welcome everybody to Create with Chris. I am Chris Hoy and today I am going to be sharing with you the secrets of perfect stenciling. Stenciling offers the opportunity to provide a professional looking design without the fear of failure or mistakes or something that's not going to turn out exactly like you would like it to turn out. We all want to produce something that's going to be amazing for everyone to see. So how do you provide a perfect stenciling without having all those issues of flaws and uneven edges? So today I'm going to share that with you. To ensure clean, crisp edges is the key to perfect stenciling and it is not difficult it's just a combination of common sense and patience and using the correct tools so let's get started stencils we at cupboard distributing have developed a line of stencils that we manufacture here in-house and they are the cd stencil stencils and if you're not familiar with them, they are absolutely wonderful. It's a 7.5 mil, which is a little bit thinner than a five. If you get a five mil, it's a little bit thicker. Maybe I'm saying that backwards. If you get a five mil, it's a little bit thinner and sometimes they can be just a little bit too delicate. If you get a, a heavier mill, then you get those thick edges. And a lot of times when you stencil, that creates that ridge around the outer edge and that's kind of a problem as well so it's kind of like the story of goldilocks and the three bears not too thick not too thin cd stencils are just right love these they're durable they're cleanable they're reusable they're washable and they last a very very long time excellent stencils so you want to make sure that you have a good stencil and that you have a dependable stencil. The second important key to perfect stenciling is the brush that you use. Alrighty, so I was, I never did like to stencil and I decided the reason I didn't like to stencil is because I wasn't very good at it. Why wasn't I very good? I, I can paint, I can do all these other things, but when it came to stenciling, I had a lot of issues finally decided I think it was the brush so I worked and worked and worked and I developed my own line of stencil brushes these are my signature brushes my spectacular stencil brushes I have a six a five a four and a three. Oh my gosh this is majorly earth-shaking changes the bristles are really soft and if you use makeup brushes, it almost has that same soft bristle as a makeup brush. Very gentle. I, I decided that the stiff bristle brushes, um, all they did was create kind of a scratch and a, I wasn't able to achieve a smooth, beautiful application of paint. I didn't want my stencils to look like they were stenciled. I wanted them to look like they were airbrushed or it, just using it as a base coat. It just, these brushes are life-changing. If you haven't tried my brushes, um, make sure that you go to our website, cdwood.com and check them out because they're on sale this week too. Okay, and I forgot to mention we do have some specials going on today. So if you comment um, today, you could be in a drawing for, we have a pack of stencils. I have Lindsay here with me. It's a set of seven stencils, retail value $48.93. And we're giving that away today. So make sure you comment below to be entered into a chance to win a set of stencils. Alrighty, back to the brushes. These bristles, there's a bazillion bristles in each one. It's not only crimped, but it is glued as well. So 
these are not going to come out. There's nothing more frustrating than stenciling and having little uh, hairs come out and then you have to pick them off. So with my spectacular stencil brushes, that's not going to happen. All right, so we have the correct stencil. We have the correct brush. So now we need the correct surface. Now, it, this is where common sense kind of comes into play. If you do not have a smooth surface, if you have a textured surface, you're not gonna get those clean, crisp edges. If you have a properly prepared surface, I have, this is multi-purpose sealer from DecoArt. I love using this. Not only will it ensure that your paint will adhere to the surface without any issues, but also you're going to achieve a really smooth surface. And usually after I put a sealer on it, then I give it a light sand, or you can wait until you put your base coat on and give it a light sand. But it only makes sense if you have a nice smooth surface, you're going to have a nice clean, or you're going to have a better chance of getting a nice clean edge. Um, paint is another key issue. Now I use Americana Deco Art Americana paint. Love it. Been using it for years and years and years. It the viscosity is perfect, and that means it's not too thin. It's going to uh, go on easily. And if you think about it, if your paint is too thin, it's gonna run under the stencil. Hence, you will get those little jagged bleeding underneath the stencil. So it only makes sense to use a paint that has a thicker body to it that you can manipulate without running under the stencil. So if you go to the dollar store and get craft paint, that's great for some things, but for stenciling, it's gonna drive you crazy. So you need to stick with a good acrylic paint that has some body to it to make sure that it's not going to run. Okay, and the fourth thing to, to ensure perfect stenciling is just that simple roll of painter's tape. I use this for, for everything. When you put your stencil down, if it's not secure and you're swirling or stippling or whatever, and your stencil moves around, guess what? You're not gonna get a clean, crisp edge. So you wanna make sure that you tag that with a piece of painter's tape, hold it in place, and your stencil's gonna be secure. And when you get ready to stencil, it's not gonna go anywhere. So we've got the stencil, we've got the brushes, we've got the paint, and we've got the tape. So we are ready to go. Let's go over here. I'm gonna switch down to my camera. And I, there are, so we have the proper tools now. What we need to do is have the proper application. And just makes sense, right? If you have the right tools and you have the right application, you're gonna get a perfect stencil. So I'm just gonna take a piece of tape and anchor it down so my stencil is not gonna move anywhere. This is such a simple tip, but I'm telling you what, it can save so much frustration. Just that simple uh, piece of tape can make a huge difference on the way your finished project comes out. I am going to, let me go out just a little bit. Out, I always go the wrong direction. And I'm just using uh, a, a sketch pad today, actually it's, uh, watercolor paper and I'm just going to get a little bit of paint let's go this way that might be easier I can bump those two together I am this is my number five this is kind of my go-to brush I like to use this is a small design but I like to use a brush that is big enough that I can cover a lot of area without having to stop and reload and stop and reload. Now, because this brush is so incredibly soft and there's 
so many bristles in it, I can load a lot of paint in it. So I'm really going to push the paint into my brush. I have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm not just gonna tap it. I wanna work that paint into the bristles. Now that I have it on there, if I go directly to my stencil, it's just gonna be way too much paint. So I'm just gonna take, swirl it on a paper towel. What that's going to do is remove the heavy paint from the tips of the bristles. And I can have enough paint in there to go a long way, but it's not going to be too heavy. Because these bristles are so soft, I can very gently stencil. I don't have to push hard and I have problems with my thumb. I injured it years ago and I don't, I, I don't have a lot of strength, so I can't grip a brush really hard to pounce and work a stiff bristle brush. So these soft bristles are just perfect if you have any issues with your hands. It just goes on like butter and it looks like velvet. So I've loaded my brush. I've offloaded a little bit of paint, wiped it onto a paper towel, and now you have the actual application. You can do a couple different things. I like to just gently swirl, and I'm just, you go both ways, you're going to get all of those edges covered, and because I have a tremendous amount of paint in my brush, it's going to supply a nice coverage. Now, the more I go over it, the darker it's going to be. And you can be a peeker. I do that often. Just lift your tape up and take a peek and see if you're liking what you see. And you can see where I started out and went over it a few times. It's a little bit heavier. If I have a lighter touch and just blend it out, it almost looks like it's airbrushed. Now, because I still have the other end anchored down, it's very easy to go back over that and put it in exact position. Painter's tape is essential. If I want to pounce, I can just pounce up and down. And I will say, it just makes sense Two light coats are going to give you a much better result than trying to put it on super, super heavy the first time. If I lift this up, I think you'll be able to tell. This is where I stippled. You get a heavier coverage. This is where I softly swirled. Now, if I still want to swirl and have a nice coverage, I just go back over the area that I just swirled. Now keep in mind, it needs to dry before you go back over it because if not, if you try to put a second coat over the first coat and it's not completely dry, a lot of times it's just gonna lift the paint and you're gonna have what we call hole. It's just gonna take it off. You can see I have a much, much better coverage with that second coat. Light layers of paint will be absolutely key in achieving perfect stenciling. So light touch. If I have a super heavy, um, if I put it on super heavy, what you're doing is you're pushing the paint underneath the stencil. And you, you can often get an uneven edge on that way. So have a light touch, look at it often, swirl or stipple, whatever your preference. There are so many different ways that you can achieve a totally different look. When you load your brush, always go back and offload just a little bit. I can have just a super light coverage. And I'll just do this very softly. And I can go a very, very long way on just one brush load of paint if you have loaded it correctly. I still have a lot of paint. 
and you can swirl both directions. You don't have to go one way. If you swirl both directions, you'll have a better, better chance of getting all these side edges. This brush is flat on the end, so when I put it down, the entire brush is touching the surface. If you have a rounded or a dome brush, just that center touches in. I never had much luck with that. I'm gonna peek at that again. You see how soft and delicate that becomes. Now, if we wanna add just a little more fun, I'm just gonna wipe my brush off and pick up a darker color. I'm telling you what, stenciling is gonna open a whole new world because it adds so much interest and design. Okay, I'm just picking up a little bit of that darker color and I just want to add some, it was a little bit heavy. So I'm just gonna start out light and add hints of a darker color here and there. You're thinking, oh my gosh, that's gonna be really weird. However, when I lift this up, it's just going, isn't that beautiful? It just softly blends. And it's not science, it's just that delicate touch. And I can just create that thread of darkness throughout the design. And how long did that take? Just a couple minutes. But look how beautiful that is. Absolutely gorgeous. Stenciling can be stunning, but you need to remember the key elements. Number one, you have to have good stencils. Make sure that you have a good durable stencil brush, you, you just, if you buy a cheap brush, you're going to get horrible results. And you're going to think it's you. It's not you. If you don't have the correct tools, you're not going to come out with a nice result. Brushes, key element. And I worked for a couple years to develop this brush. I will stand by it. Once you use this brush, you won't go back to the bristle brushes. Just absolutely fabulous. Actually, they're absolutely spectacular. So the spectacular stencil brushes just will create beautiful results. So you have your brush, you have your uh, stencil, paint, make sure that it's the correct viscosity so that you don't have loose running paint. You wanna make sure that you anchor your stencil well so that you don't have it slip sliding around while you're stenciling. And then it comes to application, common sense, and patience. I don't know if I talked about patience, but light touch. And I know sometimes we're really anxious to get the stenciling done quickly and correctly. So we just grab the paint and you, you slap it on there and go really, really fast. It's not worth it. Take your time because cleaning up errors on stenciling can be a real headache. So make sure that you take your time you have a light pressure and you put it on with intentional swirling or stippling, whichever effect you're looking for. Let it dry and put on another layer. I've sometimes put on two to three layers, even four layers to get what I want. Play around with different colors. It just will open up a whole world of creativity that will elevate any project into a professional result. So make sure that you follow these simple, simple techniques and have the correct tools and your stenciling will come out perfect every time. Yes? Two things. I want to give away some stencils. <laughs> Lindsay wants to give away some stencils. And Holly Carr is the first winner. Holly Carr, congratulations. You are going to receive a bundle of stencils worth almost $50, $48.93. And there was a question, and I believe you're going to be getting to that next, on how do you wash your stencil brushes? Okay. I use 
and I have um, a, a water bucket that has ridges in the bottom and I just gently uh, pull my brushes across the ridges. I always say take care of your brushes like you take care of your hair. Don't be too aggressive with cleaning them. You want to make sure they're super clean. But I've seen, I've seen some people take a stencil brush and stab it down and just scrub the daylights out of it. I like, do I have a... Well, I think you've all seen the heart-shaped brush scrubbies. Oh, there it's it is. Under the <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have this little heart-shaped brush scrubby and it has little nubbies on it. So I will take my brush and just gently, let me go this way. I'll take my brush and just go gently over it. And it's going to, those little nubbies are going to reach in and get the paint out of the middle section. I love, love, love using, where did it go? Oh, okay. I'm moving things around. Deco Art makes a fantastic brush cleaner. And it says on here brush and stencil cleaner. So not only can you use this to clean your brushes, but you can use it to clean your stencils as well. This stuff, I'm telling you what, is just fabulous. So kind of kills two birds with one stone. And what I have done in the past is when I clean my brushes, I'll clean them well with water, kind of do the thing with the um, brush scrubby, and then I'll take my brush and the Deco Magic cleaner and I'll just go over my stencil laid in the bottom of my sink to lift the paint off of that. If you forget and let your stencil dry overnight and you're thinking, oh, I forgot to clean my stencil, just kind of put a layer of that Deco Magic on it, let it sit for a while and go back and lift it up. Just be careful when you have a delicate stencil such as this with all these little beautiful areas, don't scrub it so hard that you bend or break the stencil. So keep that in mind. Okay, and I think Lindsay has another giveaway. Yeah, I want to give away some brushes. She is going to give away an entire set of my spectacular stencil brushes. So, and the winner is Gwen Wagner. Gwen, this brush set is worth forty-six fifty-two. So, congratulations, you are the winner. If you did not win, and not everybody won today. <laughs> But we do have a sale on our cdwood.com website. The brushes, all the brushes, not only the stencil brushes, but all of my signature brushes are on sale this week. In addition to... Um, the Painter's Pals. The Painter's Pals. And those are the smaller... These are my smaller stencils that... Um, help painter helper tools that are just a fabulous key to creating perfection every time. I always think if it's difficult to do, there has to be a better way, right? So why work harder? We want to paint because we enjoy it and it's fun and we love to do it. So if it is stressful, there's, there's another way to take the stress out because when you spend time creating something, you want it to look really nice. So these are tools that can help you. Stencils can be used as base coats. They can be used as added designs or um, elements to just create more interest, to add that wow factor. Um, you not only you get perfect shapes every time I cannot paint a circle for the life of me so I always use a circle stencil once the circle is there I can deal with it but to try and we've all painted a little circle and it's a lopsided and you got to touch it up and then pretty soon it's it's pretty good size so using a stencil whether it is a stencil a big stencil this camera's backwards, or a little circle stencil. These are my best friends, yes. Um, there was a question um, a 
a lady asked if she was stenciling with, with metallic paints. They seem to stencil very light. So would layering work to make them show up more? Absolutely. And I would suggest if you're using a metallic, they have a translucent characteristic. For example, if you are using a, a gold metallic, I would put an under layer of maybe, um, this, is, this is antique gold, but you know, a color that's similar so that it can um, enhance or reflect whatever metallic you are using. Then when you lay the gold on, it's just gonna resonate with all that rich, deep background below it, and it, it will be stunning. And it's gonna take a lot less coats. The more coats you put on, the darker it's gonna get. So if you have that nice base on it, when you put that gold on there, it's gonna be stunning. Any, qu any more questions, Lindsay? Um, I think you covered everything, but um, there is a sale on CD Stencils. Right CDStencils.com. Now, we do have a separate website for just stencils. And we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stencils. You're, if you want to take a peek at just the stencils, CD Stencils is all of the stencils we carry you're going to find something for everything. Basic shapes, uh, decorative designs, all those funny, cute sayings, seasonal, um, I th what, just everything. So make sure you go to cdstencils.com. There is a sale this week on the CD stencils, so make sure that you take advantage of that. And It is buy three, get one free okay. through the 31st. Buy three, get one free. You can't beat that. That everybody likes free, so <laughs> be sure to take advantage of that. So stenciling will open up a whole new world of creativity. It's gonna make you look good. It's gonna make you feel good because you're not gonna stress out about it. It's gonna give you confidence to create something that looks professional. Um, take the stress out of your painting. Use the correct tools, use the correct paint. Make sure your surface is prepped correctly and you're gonna look super good. And that's what we want. We do this for fun. We wanna make sure we have a fun time creating everything we do. So thank you for joining me today and take it, make sure you take a look at the cdstencil.com website. Check out the sale there, cdwood.com uh, website. Check out the sale there and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.